Number three, week six in Lowell, Ryan Stevens, corner of the end zone, Gabe Steen got the foot down, and it's a touchdown, heck of a play. Look at that. Play two from week seven, Hudsonville's Bryce Elliott gathers a snap, avoids the sack on third and 19, finds Dalton Agers, does what he does, breaks tackles and finds the end zone. Play of the year, just from last week, pre-district round, Tyler Bradfield for Rockford is gonna run, spin move, Stays on his feet, 65 yards for the score. Of course, the Rams going on to win a district title earlier tonight against Hudsonville. We're done in the studio. That's it for 2015 <laughs> Blitz here. But of course, we got three great dudes doing great work out there at Forest Hills Eastern. We're gonna have Paquita, Book, and Coach Oshnock wrap it up for us, guys. Time for four downs. Yep, four downs, so let's just get right into it here, guys. We'll go to first down. We're going to spend four downs talking about the big game tomorrow. Mona Shores hosting Muskegon. And first down, Coach, I want to talk to you. I said this last week, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. I, I thought Mona Shores had the tougher draw playing you guys than Muskegon did playing Traverse City Central. But they both did advance, and you guys did a pretty good job of containing Mona Shores. You only get 21 points. How were you able to do that? You know, I thought we had a good defensive game plan going into it. And, you know, they present a lot of different problems with their short passing game. And then at the same time, they're able to go over the top. So we tried to take the philosophy. We're going to try to keep everything inside and in front of us. And if they were going to beat us, it was going to be in the interior. But at the same time, we were able to move some guys around to give them some different reads with their option attack. Because if you just sit in one front the whole time, they can really, really make you pay for it. Coach, ton of talent going to be on the field tomorrow. But I was very impressed. I saw him against Granville. Khalil Pippleton. Talk about him, the quarterback for Muskegon. Does he compare it to anybody? Else? Yeah, he, I mean, he's electric. And we talked about it earlier. My favorite player growing up was Mill Coleman from Farmington Hills Harrison. Yeah. So he really reminds me of him. He's dynamic with the football, um, you know, through the air. Probably not what Mill Coleman was, but someone running with the football, There's there hasn't been too many guys that electric in West Michigan history. That, of course, second down. Now we're on to third down where I want to ask you about, from a coaching standpoint here, I was at the game when they played the first time. We've seen Mona Shores do a lot of the short passing game, get it out to their guys in space. They did not do that against Muskegon. They ran between the tackles with their big running back, Dom Shermata. Do you think they'll adjust for the game tomorrow, or do you think they try to do similar things? Yeah, I think they'll adjust a little bit. Coach Koziak's a good football coach, but, you know, they've got to get the ball in their playmakers' hands, and, and Coach Shermata, or Coach Shermata, <laughs> Dom, I mean, running between the tackles he's he, he he's a stud so I mean you you got to feed him the football and you got to get the ball on the edge a little bit too and I, I expect a couple up top as well all okay. right you ready fourth down fourth down <laughs> this one's for coach Dean of Lowell oh boy no matter who wins tomorrow in that showdown can either one of them beat Lowell they can will they is a different story <laughs> I, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because I think tomorrow is going to be a great game. We should enjoy it because sure. it's two really good teams. It'll be a great game. But then we know that we're going to get another one with Lowell against either of those teams. Should be another fantastic game. And could either of them beat Lowell? Yeah, they could. Will they? I don't know. I, I think it's going to be whatever happens that regional final should be really, really interesting. And I'm having fun with Jason because <laughs> we've been talking about Lowell. He's liked Lowell all year. I have. I had Lowell preseason number one. They lost the first game of the year to Wild Lake Western. A really good team who's still undefeated by two points. I did drop them behind Mona Shore but I think those games are toss-ups no matter who Lowell plays next week. I agree. All right, well, let's go to Blitz Boss. Our final Blitz Boss of the season. Brett, you're up first. Well, I'm going to go with our game tonight. Caden Peters was fantastic. Sophomore running back, 30 carries, 141 yards, and a touchdown. He was our player of the game in our broadcast. And the bad news for Coach Oshnock, because he has to play him, he's only a sophomore coach. Well, the good thing is they're not on the schedule next year. <laughs> well, Coach, you're up. Who's your Blitz Boss tonight? All right, I've got a uh, uh, kicker from uh, Hudsonville Unity Christian, and it's Connor Holloman's kicker in that game-winning field goal against Grand Rapids Catholic Central in a big pressure pack situation. Sure, and they were behind a point in that game because they had missed an extra point earlier, but of course, the redemption by kicking the field goal to get the game winner. And I'm going with quarterback from North Point Christian, Spencer Peterson. We saw the tough running touchdown he had early in that game, and then he hits Charwillicus for the game-winning touchdown. I mean, think about this. Season on the line here. Under a minute to go, you're down four to make that play. These are still high school kids, and that's a big-time play from Spencer Peterson, who's had a great year. Well, it's been a great night here on the Blitz. Coach, we really appreciate you joining us. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for being here. 
Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Well, that's going to do it for the Blitz for 2015. Thank you very much to executive producer Will Frederick, who controls everything back in the studio, and then our directors, Robert Castile and Adam McCloskey, great as well. And we certainly could not have done it without the help of people like Eric Brefka and Stacia Brundage and Eric Florence and Chris Sage. They've all been great. Everybody that's helped out this year. Stay with Fox 17. We'll have continuing coverage of the high school playoffs all the way through the state finals at Ford Field.